Good morning, brothers and sisters. Um, welcome to St. Mary's uh, again here in Greensboro, North Carolina. <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> this week, uh, after our quarantine, uh, we have been uh, we have our test results were negative, and so we gather uh, also all those who do suffer from this uh, virus, all those who suffer. In so many ways, uh, this virus has caused untold burdens on hearts and lives. And so on this feast of the most holy body and blood of Christ, or what was commonly known in the past as Corpus Christi Sunday, we now begin together in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And the Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, we now prepare ourselves as we begin our Eucharistic celebration to turn to the Lord. And doing that, we acknowledge our sins and prepare to enter these sacred mysteries of His Word and Sacrament. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you quench our thirst with your blood. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you satisfy our every hunger and thirst. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us praise our God as we say together, Glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace to people of goodwill, we praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer, you are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit. In the glory of God the Father. Amen. And I'd like to pray for all of the intentions of our parishioners uh, this morning. And I always invite uh, all those who might be looking to, uh, to gather your prayers here on this altar. So let us pray. O God, who in this wonderful sacrament have left us a memorial of your passion, grant us, we pray, so to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood, that we may always experience in ourselves the fruits of your redemption, to live and reign, God of the Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, uh, today we do not have a uh, person to assist with the camera. And so if you don't mind, I'm going to continue to just uh, be in front of our altar and share with you both the word uh, of God as well as in our prayers for the Eucharist to be broken open. So, reading from the book of Deuteronomy, Moses said to the people, Remember how for forty years now the Lord your God has directed all of your journeying in the desert, so as to test you by affliction, and find out whether or not it was your intention to keep his commandments. He therefore let you be afflicted with hunger, and then fed you with manna, a food unknown to you and your fathers, in order to show you that not by bread alone does one live, but by every word that comes forth from the mouth of the Lord. Do not forget the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, that place of slavery, who guided you through the vast and terrible desert with its seraph serpents and scorpions, its parched and waterless ground, who brought forth water for you from the flint he brought and fed you in the desert with manna, a food unknown to your fathers. The word of the Lord. 
Thanks be to God. Praise the Lord Jerusalem. Glorify the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion, for he has strengthened the bars of your gates. He has blessed your children within you. Praise the Lord Jerusalem. He has granted peace in your borders with the best of wheat he fills you. He sends forth his command to the earth, swiftly runs his word. Praise the Lord Jerusalem. He has proclaimed his word to Jacob, his statutes and his ordinances to Israel. He has not done thus for any other nation. His ordinances he has not made known to them. Praise the Lord Jerusalem. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, the cup of blessing that we bless, is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? The bread that we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? Because the loaf of bread is one, we, though many, are one body, but we all partake of the one loaf. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. This bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. The Jews quarreled among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you do not have life within you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him on the last day. My flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in him. Just as the living Father sent me, and I have life because of the Father, so also the one who feeds on me will have life because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. And like your ancestors who ate and still die, whoever eats this bread will live forever. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. On this day, how we can ask ourselves, how can you or I celebrate the body and blood of Christ if we do not remember why we do it, nor reverence what we receive, and nor receive it at all? Well, if we don't remember, we have to try to understand that Jesus gave us two basic commands, the one on love of God, neighbor, and Himself. And the second one was actually, do this in memory of me. Jesus' command on love 
we know is the fulfillment of all the law and the prophets. And his command to eat his body and drink his blood, each time we gather to celebrate the Eucharist, we believe he will give us life. And in fact, what we celebrate is actually the source and the summit of all Christian life. We're asked to remember because we've been told by Christ uh, that each time we gather for the Eucharist, we encounter really the ultimate expression of the depth of his love. And in that opportunity, we remember his sacrifice, his dying, and his rising so that we would have that life and that we would be gifted and graced with that life in the Eucharist, in the heaven's realms. We're asked to remember that each time we gather to celebrate the Eucharist, we do this not as a mere memorial, not as just a simple recitation of words. What we do is that in asking the Holy Spirit to come upon the gifts of bread and wine, asking the Lord to open up once again that love, that unity, that forgiveness, that peace, that mercy in the body and, and his blood. We recognize that we open ourselves to a life-giving presence. We become then who it is we're supposed to receive. For we receive his body, his blood, his soul, his divinity, and that his story then becomes our story as we reflect it back to our world once we have received that living Christ moving and coursing in our lives. Well, if we do not reverence the Eucharist that we will approach at this altar or any of the altars that we can come to, we recognize that first and foremost, the condition before the Blessed Sacrament is one of humility. It is gratitude. It is thanksgiving. It's a having a listening ear and a listening heart. Reverence tells us that we can walk with the Lord and to be led by the Lord, to be in spiritual friendship and union with the Lord so that we would ultimately be then prepared to be fed by the Lord in the Eucharist. But we come and we try to remember that we come with a sense of reverence before the Blessed Sacrament, before we, all that we prepare ourselves for in this Eucharist. The spirit of reverence that we can come with, that we can pray about, that we can enact in our lives is something about being in awe and wonder of the unconditional love before us in Christ's body. Reminds us not so much only of our unworthiness, but that actually we are making being made worthy and gifted by God's grace to be called the children of the Lord. Reverence is one of the basics in understanding and receiving, and will speak something to the longing actually within our hearts to be prepared to encounter Christ, to want a bond with Christ, to be alive with and in Christ. And to serve Christ and one another as, as a sharing in the love that is poured out for us. That through his body we too might be broken for the life of the world. That through his blood that is shed we too will engage in the shedding sometimes of our own blood for the sake of the kingdom. Now if we do not receive, when Jesus offered his body and blood, in the context of a Passover meal, he did so that we wouldn't simply remember, nor be in reverential awe, but that he would, that we would receive in order to eat and drink him totally within us. And so it's more than just remembering, it's more than just reverencing, we actually have to receive all that we remember, all that we reverence, so that he will come totally within us. Jesus came so that we would have light, that our joy may be complete in him, that we have, would have forgiveness and redemption for the sins and offered a life that's never going to end. When Jesus commanded us to do this in memory of him, he calls us his friends who actually need forgiveness, who need healing, who need unity, and who need hope, 
and grace is increase of faith and love to follow Him, to serve Him, to say yes to the promptings of the Holy Spirit. And don't we need that sense among us in our day and age? Jesus intended that we receive Him, to become one with Him, to become like Him. And He did this in the context of the meal, sharing so that we would share with Him with one another. And together we would then be strengthened to carry out his mission. Where there's not going to be artificial boundaries and barriers that will exist when we are part of his body. We receive so that we would be like Christ to our own brothers and sisters who have left this earth's table, to those whose lives are really in shadows bonds, whose crosses have threatened to overwhelm them, those who have become so weary as to have little hope for resurrection, and to those whose memories have faded and whose spirits actually have become rather anorexic. What we receive at the Lord's table, we in turn feed others with Christ for Christ's sake. Yes, today we can remember, we can reverence, and we can receive him. The invitation stands before us in this feast to know, to celebrate, and to live these three arts of our Eucharist. And what a gift we have actually been freely given. What a gift that wants us seen into heaven. What a gift that asks from us our answer to the psalmist's question, what return shall I make to the Lord for all the good he has done for me, if not taking the bread of life and the cup of salvation and being transformed by it? Because actually, brothers and sisters, we need that. We need that. We need that to stand always with the voices of justice and mercy and truth. We need it, the Eucharist, within us to continue to live not only the ways of the Lord, but actually to transform the world by the ways of the Lord. We need the Eucharist and the word behind all that is our Lord's to continue to show grace and mercy, to say that lives matter in all stages of development, of all, of all moments that are precious in the Lord's sight, that we take this opportunity to be his body and his blood, even out on the streets uh, in protest, or in fear of the coronavirus with a faith that shall shine, that gives hope, that gives life, that gives love. Brothers and sisters, thank you. And God bless and amen. Let us now profess our, our faith as we say in the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the Holy Spirit, <clears throat> he was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. <clears throat> For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. He rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us now pray, brothers and sisters, for one another and for our church and for the world's needs. For those who are being ordained as deacons and priests at this time, it's especially for Eric Sanchez, a deacon for the Congregation of the Mission, who was ordained yesterday, we pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. 
For our young people who are graduating at, in this time, may they continue to grow in wisdom, understanding, knowledge, prayerfulness, courage, and courage, counsel in the Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for those who are being forgotten, especially the unborn, the poor, the hungry, the homeless, the immigrants at our borders, the elderly, and the voiceless, and all people dedicated in serving them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for justice to be given to all peoples who are targeted and persecuted for their race, economic situation, gender and sexual orientation, that we may have the faith, courage to stand up with them and say no more. Their lives matter. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are ill and have died from the coronavirus, for all who are suffering other forms of physical and mental and spiritual anguish, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the men and women who have given up their health and their lives, battling with this virus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For families in St. Mary's Parish who battle addictions, abusive, and violent relationships, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all people who have lost their jobs, their livelihoods, and neighborhoods, and lives in this time of unrest, especially the peaceful protesters and the police, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the members of St. Mary's who have experienced the loss of a loved one this past week, I'd like to invite the community to also now pray for uh, Father Mike Whalen and Father uh, uh, Henry Bradbury, two of our intention priests who have passed in the last week. And then also for the intention of our Mass, which is for the parishioners of St. Mary's family, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the needs that you hold within your hearts and in your hands, please speak them silently. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. Loving Father, you give us lasting food for body and soul. Answer our prayers, spoken and unspoken, as we celebrate this Eucharistic feast. For we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant your church, O Lord, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace, whose signs are to be seen in mystery in the offerings we here present to Christ 
of the Lord. And the Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, brought the Last Supper with his apostles, establishing for the ages to come the saving memorial of the cross. He offered himself to you as the unblemished lamb, the acceptable gift of perfect praise, nourishing your faithful by this sacred mystery. You make them holy so that the human race, bonded by one world, may be enlightened by one faith and united by one bond of charity. And so we approach the table of this wondrous sacrament, so that bathed in the sweetness of your grace, we may pass over to the heavenly realities here foreshadowed. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, and we, with all the hosts of angels, cry out, and without end we acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are filled with your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy there for these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. And remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Peter, our Bishop, and all the clergy, religious, and your entire priestly people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with Saints Vincent to Paul and Louise to Marilac, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and I may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ, through him, and with him, and in him. O oh God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. And together, brothers and sisters, we pray, daring to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth, 
as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free of sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, your friends, peace, I leave you my peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. And the peace of our Lord be with you always. And let us now share a sign of that peace with those who we are around, or for those who we wish to remember in our hearts. So, Yuvignan and la paz contigo, la paz de Cristo. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Brothers and sisters, behold the life of the world, the Lamb who came to take away the sins of this world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray that we may delight for all eternity in that share in your divine life, which is foreshadowed in the present age by our reception of your precious body and blood, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. I'd like to do this, uh, sorry, for this prayer for spiritual communion for those uh, of you who are unable uh, to attend in person. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself fully to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Just a few announcements. Uh, this morning we will be giving communion uh, in your hands as you will drive around the parish. Um, please remember to be prepared to receive the Eucharist um, again, to remember why we do what we do. Remember that we are to reverence that which we receive so as to live what we receive, and of course, then to receive it faithfully uh, and uh, we have to do this in your hands to avoid any other possible con contamination. And so myself, uh, we will have those times for communion again at 9 o'clock, at 10.30, and at 12. Thank you, and I pray that all of you will be blessed and that you have a, a beautiful uh, week, a safe week, and a healthy week. Now, starting tomorrow, we will have our daily liturgies over in our parish center. And again, you are welcome to come to celebrate, of course, with the social distancing that we have to do, and with masks, as we started last, well, almost two weeks ago now. Um, but we will be back, and then next week, we will be back again within the center uh, on a limited space basis. And we invite you to register online uh, your names. And each person has one name. So please uh, observe those, uh, those rules, those guidelines, so that we can accommodate people um, more so here at the parish. Thank you very much, and God bless. And the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless and keep you always, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is now ended. Go forth to be like Christ to one another. Amen. Thanks be to God.